In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a simple DHCP server in a Cisco SG350 or 550 switch. The pur purpose for this would be, for example, where we have an isolated network with no other switches or firewalls or access to the internet or in anything like that. It could also be that we get an assigned VLAN without a DHCP server and we want to set one up, for example, to be able to easily connect our equipment, our laptops or Dante devices that really want to use a DHCP server. We should never set the Dante devices to static IP addresses. That has caused uh, quite a lot of problems. So I'm going to log into this switch, which is still on the default IP address 192.168.1.254. Uh, that's the address up there. And I just log in. We then end up on this page. Under IP configuration, we have the DHCP server, but not until we switch to the advanced mode of this configuration. Then we see a lot more options here. DHCP server, for example. We also have under the IPv4 interface a setting of the VLAN 1 IP address. If we are going to set up a DHCP server for VLAN 1, we cannot have a uh, DHCP entry here. So I'll remove the entry here, just delete. Then go to DHCP server properties and enable there. Then I'll add a network pool, that's the address range that's going to be offered to clients. We will here set the IP address of one of the ranges of the switch and it, that way it knows which VLAN these should reside on. So for example, let's call this uh, AV network. Uh, it's a friendly name just for our uh, own documentation for example. The network mask 255.255.255.0 first IP address of the uh, what we want to offer to clients 192.68.100 to for example and one day is a bit short I would recommend at least seven days uh, since this is equipment usually in the AV world that's always on the network they are never disconnected and seven days is a uh, good setting, I think. Default router, that's the firewall or router, whatever you want to call it, 192.168.1.1. Even if we don't have a router in the network, we should set this option because some equipment expect there to be a router even if it's not using it. 1.1 uh, would be a logical choice for a router in this network. Uh, domain name server, this is if we have internet access and want our uh, clients to be able to reach uh, names on the internet. We could use either, for example, Google's DNS server, 8.8.8.8, .8 or if we have a firewall with a built-in, use that IP address, which was 1.1. .1. And... Uh, that's it. Uh, apply. There are other things we could set too, like the SCP options and other things, but let's leave it there. We have our network here now. Uh, excluded addresses, that's for example if someone already put something in this range we chose, for example 1.150 got a printer or something like that, or a uh, yeah, some other device already here we could add that to the excluded device, uh, well, excluded IP address, so it won't be offered to a another client. 
static hosts. This is, for example, if we always want to give a certain device the same IP address, we just add it here. So, for example, 192.168.120 for a NVX RX1, for example. Network mask. And a Mac address. If this was an NVX, a Crestron device, it should be 0.10.7f colon. Uh, since that's all, always the Crestron devices, and then we pretend it's this. Uh, it's not very likely, but just for a MAC address. And then we leave the rest of the options to be uh, default. We close, and we've added this device. Uh, JCP op options could be, for example, for a NTP server or similar. Address binding, this is the list of addresses that has been uh, reserved in the GACP server. We have the 1.120 that I added before with a MAC address. If we uh, connect another computer, for example, we would get that computer in this uh, list too. And that way we can see which MAC addresses got uh, specific IP addresses. We'll press save to save the settings. Then we'll go to administration, file management, and file operations. And then we'll do a backup on the file for the configuration. And we'll open it to have a look at what we've done. And then we see here that we've added the pool and we can here add more devices so we don't have to use the GUI uh, to do that. We can just add several addresses like 24, 25, 30 devices and then upload the configuration. We could of course also do this using command line. Uh, then when we've done that we are done.